Hello and welcome to the Metroidvania Review official stream. This is Blasphemous Part 7, and today I'm hoping that we can get the bad ending. I also have here with me today Nick. Say hi, Nick. Hey, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to the bad ending. Yeah. So I'm just going to check our map real quick and see where we haven't covered yet. Um, was there something that I was supposed to purchase? I think I got taken care of everything that we needed to do before we moved on. There's a secret over here, and you know what? We can teleport to that, so let's, let's go grab that real quick. Because I know it always takes a few like minutes um, for people to jump into the stream, so I didn't want to go straight into the content. <clears throat> I think the bad... Oh, yeah, I remember this. Start with all your dead Conehead friends. <laughs> oh, my good head. I thought you were about to say co-workers. Oh, yeah. I was like, They're yeah, we just go to work, put on our Conehead. There's Brian. Fill it with Devin. blood. Yeah. Steve. These guys are a bunch of slackers. Do they ever explain what happened to all these people? Do you hear that in the background? Uh, I don't have sound on. Uh, yeah, I mean, you would hear it over my, my speakers, so... Uh, I can hear the mild chimes in the distance. Okay, it's so not very a, loud, though. There's a blood platform here. Oh, I just don't have the uh, thing equipped. Yeah, there's like an ice cream truck outside of my house blasting music right now. <laughs> He's not going to go away until you go buy some ice cream. Yeah, I guess I'll be right back. No, I'm just kidding. We'll keep moving up here. Oh, there's a body here. Well, let's talk to it. Why not? Let's see what uh, insights you have for us today, dead body. <clears throat> Listen, my son, the silence, the undulating silence, a silence where valleys and echoes slide, a silence that bows foreheads to the ground. Thanks, body. <laughs> Super oh, there's a, it's a baby. That's good. I'm actually kind of. Oh, hey, look! There's another giant in the background. I'm actually kind of done with babies because I don't think that we're going to actually get them all. Not with that attitude. <laughs> Unless somebody requests it, I know that a lot of people like to watch completionist videos, but. I think if I were to do a completionist video, it would be better if I cut together where all the babies are rather than, you know, willy-nilly getting them all. But I think there's a guy and his whole thing is completionist videos. Yeah, well, I know that, but has he done Blasphemous before? He no. might have. He's done a lot. All right, let's see. All right, so um, let's see if we can get to... I think we might have to kill one more boss before we can do the bad ending so I bet you turn into a tree that's my guess you think I'm going to turn into a tree yeah that seems like something that would happen in a bad ending in a bad ending that's funny and then they make you play new game plus as the tree <laughs> welcome silver end why are you angry did something. I don't know what I did. <laughs> Just agreeing with uh, New Game Plus as a tree. New Game Plus as a tree would be hilarious. I am the Sin Tree. Uh, Nick doesn't know what happens. <laughs> yeah, I literally just guessed at what would happen. I guess you just confirmed it. <laughs> I just said it was funny. I didn't say anything. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. So many people turn into trees in this game. <laughs> that's true. Who have we seen? We see it. Saw, well, we only saw the one guy with the oil, right? Was there anybody else that's turned into a tree at this point? Yeah, they've been in, like, backgrounds and stuff. All right. So I, we we're either able to get to the bad ending now, or I need to kill one more boss because we need another mask. Um, so let's go ahead, let me just fill in this square here. You know what, I'm just going to keep going left here. Let's we'll see what happens. I have to get back to getting good at this game. <laughs> I'm sure everybody's tired of me talking about Batbarian this week, but um, I've been playing Batbarian lately, and it is a completely different game from a control perspective. It uses a uh, DVD. DDR uh, dance platform? <laughs> no, it's just uh, 
That should be a Metroidvania. It uses a DDR platform. That would be interesting. You know, I, there needs to be more rhythm-based Metroidvanias. I think. I'm kind of surprised because it seems like uh, rhythm-based. Uh, like I've seen shooters. I've seen roguelites. I don't think I've ever seen a Metroidvania. So there's there's Metroidvanias that have music as a theme, like uh, Chronicles of Teddy does, um, which I. I want to play that game again. I'm like, maybe I should stream that game. I'm like, no, we're doing Metroid next. We can't. <laughs> There's so many games I would like to, well, not play, to play again it. and show off. What's that? Not to mention a game that's themed around music wouldn't be best considering I can't listen to the music. <sighs> well, I can figure that part out. I've got a solution. We just haven't like bothered putting it together yet. We tried to do that once, I thought. No, we didn't. Like, I have it. What the heck? I'm like not able to do it in the air again. That's weird. Maybe I'm not holding the button down long enough. Oh, I'll just treat as an hit him as an obstacle and just get past him. Oh gosh, there's too many things on the screen now. <laughs> what the? Wow, they came from uh, everywhere. Oh, let's spell the way I quit. I like how far you ran away just to get hit anyway. Okay, that's one down. Two down. Uh, where'd the other angel go? You know what? I don't care. Let's just go. Just hey, imagine welcome, doing angel. this. Just imagine doing this to a beat. Well, this is cool looking. Oh, hi. <laughs> are these the, uh... Are these the... This is the first boss, right? I can't remember. Was it? I can't tell because they're just shadows. Yeah. I think it is what the first boss was. Did I actually double kill those guys? Man, that's... That was cool. Nice. <laughs> Perfect synergy. That was stylish. <laughs> also, uh, I've been playing a uh, side scroller too. It's not a Metroidvania though. Wait, is it I've Noita? Been... No, it's Odin Sphere. Oh, right, right, right. Some people would call that a Metroidvania. Controversially. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's exploration, but. Yeah, it's basically any time that you have a game where you can go left instead of just going right, people think it's a Metroidvania. <laughs> we're, we're trying to move away from talking about whether or not it's a Metroidvania, because I know it's a tired topic at this point. But anyway. But it's Odin's funny. Odin's Fear, right? Odin's Fear. I'm surprised they never released a uh, PC version. It's Atlas, right? No. Uh, yeah. Is it Atlas? I no, it's Vanillaware. Vanillaware. Okay. Atlas is like strangely anti-PC, and I don't really know their reasoning. They oh, think I, they think that anybody that puts it on PC gets their game pirated a lot, which is probably not inaccurate. Atlas seems to have done more games lately than they used to. Well, they experimented with putting uh, Persona on PC, so. There may be some movement there. If they do the, like, release it on consoles, then a year later or two years later release it on PC thing. Yeah, honestly, I, don't. I think that's a fine. You think so, Silverin? I really wish I was recording on my first playthrough because it's been, like, two years since my first playthrough, so it's hard to remember exactly how everything was. Alright, let's see if this body's... Oh gosh, that's the wrong button. Up and down, worse than pain, and worse than the cold is the squeaking, the incessant squeaking of that dinged floor of rusty mechanisms. Why would anybody want to use it so much? Okay, so these guys don't scroll too fast. Maybe they just decided at this point in the game that that was not the best way to... Well, they're dead. They're not in a hurry. Yeah, maybe. I'm doing this because I know I'm going to need this elevator again at some point. But I want to get this, uh, well, let's see if this door opens with that key I just got. Nope. Uh, now that you mention it though, Silver, and it does seem like this place is more yellow than I remember. They threw the grass in. Oh, it's just a hole now. Do you get anything for collecting all those? I know there's like a door in that room. I don't know if they've added that or 
I still think you should build your own, like, flesh golem. Flesh golem, that'd be awesome. And then you could write it. Like Mega Man X. We have all of these ideas that just need to be put into a game. That's brilliant. Well, there was a game called, uh... What was it called? It was a shooter. And it was like Biopunk. Oh, what is that coming out? I know what you're talking about. <laughs> that's the that's the real question, because it seems like it's been a long time. I, I think it starts with an S. It's like Skulls or Scourge or something like that. Yeah, sc Scourge sounds right. Not Scourge, because... Oh, what is it? It's one word. All right, so we have the switch here. All right, good. It's slow enough to... Oh, I uh, didn't think I was going to kill that guy on the way up. I just thought I would hit him a couple of times. Anyway, it looks really cool. Biotech is an interesting idea. Yeah, and I feel like it hasn't been really explored all that much. There's a lot of ideas that, like... I'm glad that we're finally kind of moving away from, uh... Yeah, there are. Every, every wall here is suspicious. I'm glad we're kind of moving away from the Tolkien fantasy now. Like, it seems like most people are changing that yeah. up a little bit. Yeah, that definitely dominated for a long time. Yeah. Not that I don't like the Tolkien fantasy, but variety's good. Yeah. And it's always fun to read about crazy alternatives. <clears throat> so I think this guy's one of the guys that... I should have parried. Yeah, this is one of the uh, item guys that we need to kill for the the final Maya Copal upgrade. Uh, let's check this wall over here. Why would I need to visceral attack these guys? They all die one hit. <laughs> and you get to look at them die all bloody. Yeah, I think that that's the primary benefit of the visceral attacks, which some people might like that. They really should give you something for it. Ever since Doom, it's Extra like you souls or something. Uh, that was weak. That didn't pop up once before you ran into it. Yeah. Not telegraphed it all on the floor before they come up. Yeah, the floor, it, it almost looks like it's glitched. Does it look like there's like a panel over it or something? Yeah, it looks like when they pop up, the floor texture is like covering up what's supposed to be there. I think that there might be a graphical error, and that could be on my side. I don't know what that is. All right, let me think here. I think we explored the top left area of this place thoroughly, so I guess we'll just move forward to the... Do we have the key to this now? Yeah, we do. Cool. We have two keys for this place. We're kind of ripping through this place. Uh, let's get my lung out. I still... I'm going to complain about this every time I have to change my relics. <laughs> I don't understand why they can't just all be equipped at once. Let's pay attention. It, we'll find out if there's any place where it, it would make sense to restrict that, because... Yeah, I... I don't know. Probably just a design mistake. Yeah. Oh, got the shortcut and a body we can talk to. I have to have a quick one thing to get through. I saw him approaching between the bars. I saw fire burst through his chest and scorch him. I saw fire burn from thin air and fuse his skin. He walks with fire. Fire with him. That's a spoiler alert for the boss. He's the T-1000. Yeah, my Maya Culpa is pretty... So let me think. So we got... We got the lions here. So there was the lion, there was the... Maybe you could look this up while we're playing, so... I don't have to wander all the way back to that hallway. So there's a lion, there's a guy in the library section. Um, I think there's one more in the cathedral area. I don't have the key of the Inquisitor yet. Oh, and the name of that uh, bio uh, shooter was Scorn. Scorn. Okay, I was right. It was, I mean, I was right that it started with an S. You were. You were. We were. You were pretty darn close. 
All right. Uh, what am I looking at? Final Maya Copa? Uh, no, uh, it's the... Well, in the Maya Copa <laughs> upgrade section, you could probably find it. Um, but there's a puzzle where you have to kill three different enemies without traveling. That's the other thing I want to check is to see if I'm allowed to save in that process. Like, stop at a... Um, is it the Chalice of Inverted Verses? Yes. Yeah, that's the one. Uh-oh, I think we just accidentally entered the boss room. <laughs> I did not mean to do that yet. Well, this will be interesting. Oh, look at him. He's just a little, little guy. No, this, you don't want to, this guy is not easy at all. <laughs> just grab the sword. Just grab it. I remember this being one of the harder bosses. Take it from him. And I, I would, I think I would agree with that. Boy, I, I need to really. I kind of came in here completely unprepared. For the three enemies you have to kill. Right. Because you care about them right now. It's that lion. It's the one with the bull head, the like human body bull head with the huge stick. So that's in this area. And this... then the sleepless tomb, the statue walking with the casket on its back. So those are the two I know about. What's the last one? Uh, Lionheart, the, the guy you kill. Okay, but there's another one. What's the first one? The brazen bull. The, the bull head with the human body and a giant stick. Huh. So, lion, bull, sleepless two. Okay, I'm starting to get this guy's pattern. This is the one I can't dodge very easily. See? <laughs> Need a little pattern recognition from this. I like it when he appears in the middle of this room. It makes it really easy to get a combo on him. Okay, well, now our attack power is boosted, so maybe we can. Okay, so he does one, two, and I think three. He stops, no four. We haven't even hit the berserk mode yet, though. So how do you feel about bosses that mid-fight will have some sort of mechanic to actually heal themselves? <sighs> like anything, it just depends on how it's executed. Oops, that really hurt. Like, theoretically, it could be a lot of fun. Um, like, reloading? I think most of us would agree that reloading has good tension to it. And maybe the boss healing itself could have a similar sort of feel to it. I think if if the mechanics in there, there needs to be a way for the player to actually stop the healing, like something they can do to to shut that down. Right, and I think that that's that's one way that you can make it really fun. Whoa! Now he explodes like crazy. Shoot! Super <laughs> <laughs> explosion. Or. If while they're healing, it actually opens them up, and if you do something risky, you can do even more damage than normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That type of thing would be really cool. That sounds like, or maybe, or maybe you could have a bloodborne type mechanic where jumping in there lets you steal the heal. Oh yeah, that That'd could be, be real good. good. Like yeah. you, know, oh, I didn't unlock that shortcut. Honestly, I wasn't really prepared for that boss in the first place. So let's explore some more. Uh, and he's marked, so that's nice. Now we can now we can avoid him um, while we explore the rest of the dungeon. She got so much less magic now. Yeah, I like I use it. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna cry. I have too too little magic that I never use. <laughs> okay, so we unlock this shortcut, and there's another shortcut that takes you more close to the boss. More close is not... should be closer to the boss. So does this room lock you up every single time you come in here? It doesn't look like it. Looks like that's just my event. Okay, so what I should have done is I should have gone right. But I went left instead. So there's one more key. Did I? 
I explored that room, right? I think so. For some reason, I thought it would remove the lock on the door after you've been in. Thinking too much Zelda. Wow. It is satisfying when the locks break. Yeah, when they fall off. <laughs> These silent rooms, you can probably hear that ice cream truck outside my house. I really need to get good at parrying again. But the ice cream truck's still out there? What's he doing? I don't know. I don't even know if it's an ice cream truck. Like, somebody's it's just, just a guy accordion. playing accordion. He could be. Like, I don't know. Like Where do you play an accordion? <laughs> okay. Like, I've been around neighbors who have, like, garage bands before. Is there an accordion in any kind of music besides polka? You know, I don't know. It's actually... Scott, no, there's the, like the French like romance link or uh, music where. Oh yeah. Okay, so I can't have gone through that door right because it's closed right now. Let's just look in here just to be sure. Yeah, I haven't opened this door before. Oh, that's why, because <laughs> I don't have the key. All right. Well, now that door is really memorable to me, so I'll know to come back there when I do get the key. There's a good reason. I was thinking about the lore this week, and then of course when I get up this morning, I don't remember anything that I was thinking about. Um, but you are you did notice that there's like plants growing everywhere, and like apparently the miracle has to do with plants. Yeah. And what does that necessarily symbolize, or does that have any meaning to it, or is it just a stylistic choice that they made? Uh, plants are... Um... green and <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be some people who are like you guys are making fun of this game <laughs> no <laughs> I mean yes but let's see you sit and watch a game for 12 hours and not make fun of some stuff <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't matter what the game is it could be my favorite game ever where it's probably still find something to make fun of yeah Although I do maybe think it's cause, it, oh, maybe it's because plants and trees are like they're uh, they're hardy and tough and they can grow anywhere. So in the harsh world of blasphemous, becoming a tree means that you're uh, tough. <laughs> well, I mentioned last time that there is some symbolism in the Bible with uh, olive trees. Although I don't know how much this game pulls from the Bible. Because they, they've obviously distanced themselves from biblical theming by using the word miracle instead of, you know, actual namings. Although I think right. that would be extremely controversial if they did that. Yeah, but that might get them, uh... Okay, controversy yeah, can get you sales. <laughs> Postal? That was not a good game by any means. Oh, but I got all its publicity because it was the big pilot right. game. Yeah. Well, like Postal 2 or 3 or whatever. The original Postal was like a top-down isometric game. I remember playing that on one of the very first computers I ever had. So what was the very first computer you had access to? Uh, Apple IIe or Apple II GS. I was too young to know which one came first. Because the Apple IIe is the older computer, I'm going to assume that that was the one that... My family yeah, had first. I, I think my dad had. He had the. It had two floppy drives right under the monitor, and like true floppy drives, like <laughs> however big those were, three inches, four inches. So my my dad's Apple II GS had like four hard drives of like 56 kilobytes each, and he named them the QDs for Quantum Drive. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on that, it seems kind of funny. Oops. Man, I was almost no damaging this for such a long time. Man, I remember my dad got a fifth drive reader when I was in, I want to say high school, so this would have been like 98, 99, something like that. 
And I thought that thing was amazing with its like... Gosh, how big were those? I remember them being a gigantic, but maybe they weren't. Not anymore, of course. I mean, I want to, I want to say they were like a hundred meg, but maybe that's too big. Are you talking? Oh, sorry, I, I was kind of fighting the boss. You were talking about those big discs that we used to use, right? Yeah, like the big zip drive discs. They yeah, were like yeah, super zip discs. Thin discs. I thought those were the future at the time. <laughs> well, yeah, they were convenient. They were writable CDs, but they weren't convenient for putting data on. Right. And basically, they were the future, except then we discovered solid-state memory and jump drives became a thing. Right. I get too greedy with the damage sometimes. Oh, gosh. You didn't have to hit me twice. <laughs> oh, I am really oh, yeah. bad at this. Zip disks were originally launched with capacities of 100 megabytes, then 250, and then eventually 700. I remember thinking nobody needed more than 250. Of course, at the time, it was like mostly storing text files. Well, yeah. My the first computer I ever bought myself had a hard drive of I think 10 gig or something like that. I'm glad you're doing the circle pattern because that's the easiest pattern to dodge. Good guy, queers returned by the flames. <laughs> you know, I should be using my laser attack when the. Uh, He's on the other side of the room like that. That went way faster than I expected. Of course, is real obnoxious when he plays D and D because he makes all the other players call him by his full name. <laughs> Come on, go. He's, close to being, he's so close to being dead. He's starting to get a little random with his pattern. He's trying to catch me off guard as I try to dodge or predict the dodge. No, oh, are you serious? There. You know what? I like that. That's good. Good shot there. I'm gonna keep that sword. Stay there, sir. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's a way better sword. <laughs> Second try. Not too bad. I was actually prepared to fight him that time, so mentally prepared. The first time I'm like, ugh, just watch this pattern and memorize it. <laughs> Dang, you have 20,000 gil. The one that from punishment was hearsay. One of the sheltered. He was unjustly condemned to the stake for heresy. And the Inquisitors bore witness to the flames, engulfing his body amidst an atrocious communion of prayers and cries. Still, when it was over, and the flames had died, the merciful miracle called them forth again, and from them, from the ashes and the embers, the body of Kirsi rose anew, for fiery are the paths of the miracle. Is this... I'm trying to remember what other... what he said about the other bosses, but it seems like this boss had... I think they were really proud of this boss. <laughs> But they should be. That was a good boss. I think I agree I with Sylvan. Like that guy should show up before you fight the boss. I feel like the increased context of who you're fighting would be valuable. Uh, yeah. Um, they kind of did the same thing in Metal Gear Solid 4, that you beat the beauties, and then like they told you how the beauty had a horrible childhood. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess that's true. Hey, you beat the boss. This is why you should feel bad for beating the boss. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like they just locked him up, and then he got angry, and then caught on fire. <laughs> because the miracle's a fiery thing. Trees and fire. That was the, uh, um... That was the guilt statues. Yeah, I think it's really silly that they have, like, seven of them throughout the world when, you know... Especially now that you can just absolve your sins at the, uh, cathedral. So silly. It's almost pointless. Okay, so I don't have the mask yet. Didn't I? Yeah, I don't think I picked up the mask. Oh gosh, I have two Quicksilvers. Anyway, now that I have some money, I know what to do with it. You know what, come to think of it, I think that the, the key doors that we haven't been able to enter might be unlocked with this... Uh, 
Oh shoot, where's that shop? I should have marked the map where that was. I think it's in this area. Mm, it's right here. Yeah, I don't remember at all. Okay, so you can't teleport. I guess we'll just keep an eye out for Bullhead. You. Oh, these, these paintings are ridiculous looking. Oh, hey, there we go. <laughs> I think the shop is in this area, but I don't remember. So we may be wandering for just a tiny bit as I try and figure out where that was. Whoa! You know I should have saved my lasers for that thing. Let's see if I just get past it. Nope, it is a wall. There it is. <laughs> what mistakes. My gosh, everything here is so expensive. Well, like, I gotta make sure I get the key first. Alright, so this is the key of the Inquisitor, so that's that opens all those doors. In hindsight, I should have come here first and bought this stuff. That's kind of annoying. Do you need that to move forward? I don't think so. It's just secrets, I think. And I can't afford this. But this Aww. is just toxic damage, so I don't even think I care about that. The cinnamon roll. <laughs> Alright, now I just have to figure out how to get back to the save point without dying. I guess if I go this way, it'll be fine. It's a miracle cinnamon roll. I thought that these pendulums have to have, like, the modest woman on it. <laughs> Yeah, otherwise it's just gauche. <laughs> it's like, let's put some death traps in our cathedral. What should we do? I don't think we've seen any spinning buzz blades. Mm, you know, honestly, are I don't remember. Why are you even bothering with this game? Well, we already know that this game's controversially not a Metroidvania. I think it's close enough. It's not even a controversy anymore. No, no buzz blades. Not a Metroidvania. <laughs> Definition has been thwarted. All right, uh, blood, blood filling place. Where is the closest to a save point? I think this one. Hopefully, I have enough souls to get this. I still don't know why they have multiples of these, because you can just go to any of them to fill your blood vials. Alright, so we have two quick silvers, but it costs like 7,000 souls for the next upgrade, so I guess we'll just save up for that. You've been getting souls pretty darn quickly. Yeah. It's like they knew that the Maya Culpa upgrades weren't that great, so they added all these other options to spend your souls on. Okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead and explore... Oops. I'm going to explore this place and use that key of the Inquisitor I just got since I did... Um, did you see that? <laughs> like, teleported um, backwards. A lot. Anyway, I spent all that money on this key of the Inquisitor, so let's go ahead and explore this place. This guy might be it's the easiest to just get. Just a bunch of... Uh, rooms in a broom closet. So you spend ten grand on... nothing. <laughs> Could be. I don't know. Uh, I should have marked all those locked doors on a map. See, this is the thing. Unless the game does it for you, I just don't remember. Okay, so there's a gate here. Is there a door on the other side of the gate? I gotta be able to like go through the floor or something. Oh wait, here we go. There's this door. What the? He, like, moved. Like, this place makes sense to have the whipping people. Yeah, you gotta whip them prisoners. 
48 chest. A fancy chest for a prison cell. Wow, another blood vial. Or bile vessel. So that was worth it. Although that was a really expensive bile vessel if that's the only thing we find. Alright, somewhere around here there's gotta be a way to go through the floor or something. Or there's a switch that opens it. Still haven't found the mask. Is the mask definitely in this area? I don't know where else it would be. I mean, it could be just up in the cathedral area, and I'm just uh, doing extra stuff right now, which is possible. That was a cool boss, though, so I'm not regretting it or anything. Uh, the body we read earlier, and it said something about silence or something? No, that was a different body. You know what? Let's check the body. We'll, we'll see if... Uh... Okay, that ladder is just glitchy. <laughs> yeah, their advice is always so useful. Yeah, well, I mean, it's cryptic. I don't know if it's necessarily bad advice. There's also a room in the bottom left we haven't even explored at all yet, so we'll check that out over there. Let's pull this guy and check the body. Up and down, worse than pain, worse cold, incessant squeaking of the floor of rusty mechanisms. I don't know the answer on that one. <laughs> They sound like they're barking. Okay. I don't think there was any Inquisitor doors in the room to the right. I'm going to take the risk on that one. I know of one other one at least. And we haven't explored this room at all, so we'll take a look in here. Blue light. What is blue light? Outside, apparently. Okay, so this is a shortcut to that area. I don't know what good that does us. Now that we can teleport, it's even less useful. Now get out my lung. Let's see. Good job. You know, as soon as I flipped that switch, I knew that this guy was going to cause trouble. <laughs> so that says... Does it look like Arabic characters? I'm trying to read the portraits around the wall. So fire is something that's used in a lot of religions as a representation of guilt and sin and uh, absolving sin. Kind of so, interesting it's both sin and absolving sin. Well, like, so it's a, it's a pretty easy symbolism looking at, like, um, goldsmithing. Uh, Gold is often mixed with like metals and, uh, I'm sorry, with rock and whatever else you dug it up with. Heating it really hot m makes the gold molten and makes it really easy to purify it. So, what you're saying is we need to light people on fire? Yes. Okay, cool. Given the context of everything else that's been happening in this game, using fire is probably a good idea. And scream, give me your gold. Yes. <laughs> you will become gold if I heat you up enough. I mean, if they have, like, fillings. Sphere of the Are gold fillings not a thing anymore? Can you still get gold fillings? I don't know. We're using gold so much in our se uh, semiconductors that... Seems like a waste. So every once in a while, 
I don't have any of my stuff equipped. That's hilarious, because we forgot to re-equip it after we were trying to solve that one puzzle. So not only did I beat that boss in the second try, I did it without any... <laughs> you, were you were doing hard mode. I was doing hard mode, I didn't even know it. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good combination. Well, actual pro, or I just have enough Maya Culpa upgrades to <laughs> make up the gap. Okay, let's see. we got to figure out what we want to equip real quick. Yeah, I'll put that one on. Right now I'm just putting them on a random because apparently I don't need them. I feel like there's got to be something in this room. Like, we couldn't have gone all this way for nothing. Especially with how hard it was to get up here. That, you got that really nice painting on the wall there. Yeah. That what what does that say? Several other places. Pluto Resure. I think it's Pacto Resure. It's probably just nonsense. Okay, there's got to be something in that room, but we apparently don't have it yet. All right, well, I know of one more door that we haven't explored yet. Let's go do that real quick, and then we'll move forward. There might be another door that I missed, but eh, we'll move forward either way. I googled pack door, and Google was like, did you mean Petco? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, some games that I Google, it's so hard to... Like the game Batbarian that I keep uh, talking about. It's always like, that's not a real word. What are you doing? Okay, so I guess there's two Inquisitor doors that I know about. And this room is empty. So I'm guessing it's so silent here. Was there another body? I'm guessing we have like have to have like a bell or something. Is Muted bell? What was the name of the key? Uh, so the other one was talking about silence. Is the key of the Inquisitor. So both this room and that other room were really silent. That the bell was the solution? Okay, well, I have no reason not to equip it, so... Give it a try. Is there a spell that I can cast? Hmm. So the one talked about um, squeaky floors and mechanisms, and the other one was talking about silence. Apparently, it will unlock the jaw of Ashgon, the Falnix of Zeth, and the and an empty vial vessel. So you can get three items using this from the from the key. Yeah, yeah. But we're talking about these silent rooms, though. There's got to be a puzzle for that. So the empty vial vessel is really the only major thing you want. But what the heck? from the Inquisitor key itself, but there was those two empty rooms that seem to have nothing in them, or seem to... There's gotta be some kind of puzzle with those rooms. Yeah, there's actually a link. Key for the Inquisitor usage. Unlock some cells in the Wall of Holy Prohibitions, but if you click it, it doesn't actually connect to anything. Yeah, that happens a lot on wikis. So, it's a habit of mine that I try not to touch the floor for more than a second, like when I'm moving places. Just something I've developed over playing so many Metroidvania games. I've demoed a couple of uh, games. Uh, one of them was the Haiku game, and somebody commented on the video, it's like, you're so bouncy, why are you so bouncy? <laughs> you gotta... Uh, you Just gotta entertain myself. <laughs> I love the details of like 
this elevator could have just been an elevator, but no, it's got to be an elevator of dead horses. What? You don't have a dead ele- or a dead horse <laughs> elevator? Or in the background, you got the crying. It's like who carved that? And also, is that actual water, or did they carve the water out? All right. So this is the first place that we went to in this game. Oh, look! Hi. Take the last one of these pains. Oh, she says it's the last one. Did now depart towards the cradle of punishment. Oh, penitent ah, she's one. clearly got plenty of swords left. Like, thinking about her, I don't think she symbolizes anything. <laughs> like, all those swords could be in her heart, which could be related to the life aspect. I think she symbolizes, oh man, she looks cool. Yeah, that's probably exactly what it symbolizes. And this must be the mask. Yep. All right. Now we can go beat the beat the bad ending. And we got 45 minutes to do it. I'm excited. I don't know if we're gonna make it, but we'll find out. We're gonna find out if I was right or not. Although at this point, I'm pretty sure I am. And there we go. Let's just get to a save point. We'll explore around some more later. Uh, closest save point. And I was thinking, I, I figured it out. Your character's name is Blasphemous. That's Blasphemous right there. <laughs> it's like that one guy who was talking about Die Hard, and he's like, and then Die Hard lost his shoes, and Die Hard got his feet all cut up, and... <laughs> yeah, they're calling uh, Master Chief Halo. Or uh, calling uh, Nathan Drake, Drake Fortune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> calling John Thomas Blasphemous. Metroid. John Blasphemous sounds awesome. <laughs> it does sound awesome. It sounds like an action hero. Should get Bruce Willis to help us with this movie that we're making up right now. Heck, that sounds better than Constantine. <laughs> we have a lot we can explore up here, but we'll do that next time. Right In now. a world, all the Coneheads are dead. John Blasphemous is the only thing standing against... Well, I don't know miracle. what he's standing against, because he's not standing against the miracle. <laughs> John Metroid. I like how it's always... The, the, whenever you have a situation where you have a funny name like this, the first name always has to be John. Like when the guy comes and puts new shag carpet in your house and he's John Carpenter. <laughs> uh, and there's a body. Where are all his clothes? Did he come up here naked or did he get robbed? Come on, in the grand scheme of things, is that the weirdest thing we're saying? <laughs> <laughs> in dreams, I hear him speak to me, even though his, his words have no sound. In dreams, I see him watch me, even though his eyes are made of silver. Right. Cool story, bro. Yeah, is this boss still janky? Penitent one in sleeplessness, carrying the guilty sword, you have committed sure fight a lot of bosses on rooftops. crimes against the mother and her saints, against the miracle and its outbreaks. We have been entrusted with putting an end to your mission. I, Chrysanta in penance, excommunicate you, expel you, execrate you, with the blessing of our miracle of the greatest pain. And thus shall your name be erased under the heavens. So actually, she's related to the first guy that we fought on the rooftop, so this is kind of a symbolic second fight. What's with uh, people having cooler swords? I don't know. My sword just has a thorn on the bottom of it. I remember there was an RPG. It was one of the Tales games. And uh, at one point, you fight a boss and he's got a chainsaw Ooh. sword. And I played the rest of that game wishing and hoping that at some point I got a chainsaw sword. And I never <laughs> did. <laughs> 
He's still salty about it to this day. I am. That happened nope. like 10 years ago. You can't show the player a chainsaw sword and then not let them use it. <laughs> Come on, lady. <laughs> okay, maybe that wasn't a good idea either. This is like the Baller Knights in Dark Souls. So like just stop, stop it with the. Uh... Okay, she seems a lot better than the first time I fought her. She used to jink around like crazy when she was teleporting. Oh, like the frame rate would tank. Man, she is hitting you every time. Yeah. I actually was hoping there was a safe mode before this. Maybe there was one before the other floors. Let's see if we can find a closer save point, because this is probably going to take a few more tries. I don't know what it is with the... Uh, when I die, my controller doesn't seem to accept the click any button to continue. Alright, I'm going to see if there's a save point off to the left over here. This is why, because I can't apparently get through that room without getting hit once. Twice in that... In that situation. Alright, this that is guy, goofy. Considering you had killing these guys down path. Yeah. Hey, no matter what happens at this point, I still feel proud that I beat that one boss on the second try. <laughs> and now uh, my controller is not accepting any inputs. What the heck? What just happened? A miracle! Uh, uh, that was weird. What was... What? Well, that's not gonna work. <laughs> My controller is like uh, freaking out. That's bizarre. Turn it, off, turn it back. I have a backup controller in case this uh, continues to have problems. But I just readjusted the Bluetooth receiver and see if that helps. Alright. Take the opportunity to go get more water. Alright. Let's look to the left over here and see if there's a save point. Yep, right there. <laughs> Let me put this uh, falling thing on in case I miss this jump. Or any of these jumps. Hey, right, that's much closer to the boss. So I've uh, I've lived in my current apartment for about four years now, and I always just assumed that my heater was broken. <laughs> I never really cared because I live in Southern California, and it's always sunny and in, in the seventies for the most part. It's always sunny in California. Pretty much, except it's actually true. Um, and I found out uh, two days ago that it has a pilot light in it that I actually have to take a light route and light to make it work. So, uh, yeah, I've gone four years with no heat when all I had to do was light the pilot light. <laughs> okay, bolsters, defenses, when you're nearly exhausted, that sounds good. What do I want to give up for that? Uh, well, we have bolster defenses, period. Pairs don't seem to be all that useful, so we'll put that on. Let's see if that helps. I actually think our uh, loadout's pretty decent. I switched the uh, magic defense for straight defense. I think that she may have um, lightning attacks, so that may be helpful. Although that doesn't look like lightning right there. I don't know what that is. See, you knew you were in trouble because her cone is bigger than your cone. Don't. Apparently not, Silverin. <laughs> there. Okay, as 
long as he's not in parry mode. I actually need to look at what um, other relics I can equip to are. If I die again, then we'll uh, check that out. Man, the recovery time on that healing is so long. So I can hit her her parry. Oops. She's gonna kill me. Yeah. Because not timing as well. Can you stun lock enemies in this game? Not really. I mean some enemies. Not really bosses so much. One thing I appreciate about Odin Sphere is you can stun lock pretty much anything. I think Odin Sphere is kind of based around combos though, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Combos. Like, I wouldn't call this a combo game. No, that's a true. Combo based big game. Alright. Let me take a look at the, um, the drawback relics. We'll call them that. Anyway, I haven't been parrying this entire game, so I'm probably not going to get good at suddenly right now. <laughs> All right, let's see here. All right, so right now we have the fervor cost increase. That's not really a good thing. We don't really want the defense decrease. Increases tears of atonement. That doesn't make. Boost the blocking stand, increasing duration, but exposes... You know, we're going to try the Heart of Oils just once to see what happens. <laughs> see how quickly she kills us. Yeah, what do we have to lose? What is with this room? Like, I walk in here and then, like, my controller... Oh, okay, that's because the elevator was coming down for us. <laughs> well, the first time, that's not what was happening. So anyway, she wants to stop us because I guess she thinks that the miracle is a good thing. Everybody seems to be saying that the miracle is a good thing. Yeah, we don't really have any evidence that the main character doesn't think so either. But apparently people have different interpretations of the miracle, which is actually very thematic of the religious <laughs> world, so... Your interpretation is I need to run around and smash people's faces. Yeah, pretty much. There's just a difference of opinion, guys. We don't talk about religion and politics in this blasphemous place. Politics. What? Don't do it. Okay. I'm actually uh, kind of liking the uh, damage boost thing, so it doesn't seem to be hurting me that much. So we're going to keep it. Whoops. Well, dodging was a good idea there. I just didn't pull it off well enough. I want the end of this game to be like this this world god shows up and they're just like, oh man, I left the miracle on this whole time? Oh jeez. This place is really messed up. Oh, Alright, they're pulling another flood. <laughs> Sorry guys. Went to Red Robin with the wife, and when we came back, <laughs> what would be like the celestial version of Red Robin? Golden Robin. Golden Robin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we got better that time. I do wish there was less of a walk to get up to her. But this is better than climbing the entire tower and going through three different enemies. Wait, is this the final boss fight for the bad ending? No, unfortunately. Well, I don't know, actually, because I never got the bad ending. <laughs> 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 which obviously means there's another boss fight if you get the true ending, which makes sense.
I do remember this being one of the harder bosses in the game. Uh, part of the reason the first time I played was because this boss was just jank one the first time I played. I, but it looks like actually, they fixed her up. It actually has pretty challenging bosses. Yeah, no, it's good. You know what that background reminds me of real heavily is uh, Vagrant's story. The whatever that town's name was. I need to play Vagrant's story. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I feel like if you got into it, you in particular would thoroughly enjoy it. I remember the plot being great, I just really don't like the crafting system, it's the biggest thing that's been a detractor for me. I feel like I get to the boss and then, like I'm doing like one damage at a time. Yeah, that's that's a classic sign of a misunderstanding and mismanagement of the sure. item create. So, but it is very involved and it does a very bad job explaining things. Sure. I mean, I've even tried using a guide the last time I played it, but somehow I managed to still mess it up. Also, with a lot of their bosses uh, doing Ooh. things like... Yeah, Don't get hit by that! <laughs> that was like a three or two-thirds hit points, and that killed me. Oh man, I wish that there was going to be a sequel, but I doubt it. Not it's, at this uh, point. It's Squaresoft, so... That game is over 20 years old now, isn't it? Yeah, they've completely forgotten about... It, it was basically their... Uh, their magnum opus on the original PlayStation. It was it was the culmination of everything they had learned over that generation, which is interesting because, in my opinion, the PlayStation was the golden age for SquareSoft. <laughs> yeah, they never really um, achieved the same level. Every I time don't know, there's arguments to be made for the Super Nintendo, I, but I think and... PlayStation is the better platform for their games. They had so many like innovative games that they were doing. Yeah. That weren't necessarily works of art, but were good games, like Grave Fencer Musashi and stuff. Sure. They were experimenting back then. Like I, the PlayStation era I think was like the era that was the sweet spot between triple A experimentation and um, budget. Sure. It was prices. It didn't the price of developing a game had absolutely ballooned into what it is today. Hmm. So you still had a lot of small, I don't know what to even call them, right. not indie games, but not third party, second party. <laughs> as much as I don't want to, I'm going to go ahead and take that thing off. The thing is, I don't know what to replace it with. I just don't really have any other good ones. Bioflash, we don't want to prevent that. Yeah, all these are not very good, so I guess I'll just do the lasers and see if I can use it occasionally. Imagine how much better it would be if you had access to the badges from Hollow Knight. <laughs> In fact, yeah. imagine playing this whole game as the whatever he's called. As the, the knight. knight. You just pogo jump everything. Yeah, basically, if you give you access to a pogo, pogo jump, you're going to use it. Oh, so you're saying she's blind? That might be helpful. That combat. I'm gonna try this. Change it up. Maybe she responds to me, or me to you making loud noises. Just quietly hold still. Maybe she won't know where you are. Oop. Apparently she does contact damage, which is annoying. <laughs> oh yeah, does she come at you? Like, if you back off, does she just stand there? How did she know was, she's flying? How, how did she know I was sliding to the left of her? Wow, she's gonna hurt. I mean, if, if I were blind, I would think that having a big AoE attack would be a great thing to have in my repertoire. I would think if they were gonna make a boss fail around the mechanic of the boss being blind, they would have like named her something like. Stana of the Broken Eyes, or something. 
know. Maybe she wraps her eyes up every night. Although, I think her sword is technically oh, winning. Oh, oh, don't explode! Oh, you're not even at half HP, why are you doing this? <laughs> oh, oh man, that was a complete miss on her part. I'm going to take it, but... I totally carried that. <laughs> oh, okay, so her sword is the Rapt Agony. That literally what she's doing is pulling the rags off of her sword, and that's when it turns purple. Ah. I actually hadn't noticed that. So that I thought it was blood dripping from her blade. It's just fabric. Come on. Come on, we gotta beat you this week. I don't want a 40-minute boss fight. goes much longer, we'll uh, need to find a mod for Blasphemous that adds Christmas trees and lights to all of the houses. <laughs> so I asked on the Metroidvania Discord um, if there were any Christmas Metroidvanias that people knew about, and one person responded, uh, Blasphemous? <laughs> I'm like, well, it does have a lot of trees, and it does use a lot of religious symbolism. <laughs> So this is a Christmas game now. It's good. We started in Halloween and uh, it took us till Christmas to even get the first ending. <clears throat> There's so many games I want to stream and talk about. I'm guessing the next game is going to be shorter and a palette cleanser. <laughs> well, I always do the uh, um, like the uh, robot name fight stream or whatever, just to just to have one that is a one shot to as a palate cleanser. Okay, so she gets pretty far with that. Okay, you really don't want to get hit by that, and I really need to stop jumping when she does that. When she parries is a good time to... You know, I'm okay with this pattern. Let's just keep that up. Stop jumping when she does that. <laughs> okay, all right, so Find a good opening to heal. across the screen keep that Gosh. apparently in there is a comic that came out to supplement the story oh yeah the comic Kristana uh, says that um, the goals of her and the penitent one are quote different opposite yet complementary which suggests that she is in direct opposition to the Petnit One's goal. Different, opposite, yet complementary. So maybe she wants to do what the Petnit One's doing before he does it. If that's the case, though, she's literally like right at the steps of where you have to be to finish this quest. Yeah, that's not opposite. Oh. Okay, she's going to continue longer. I was expecting her to stop after the fourth one. Okay, in the wiki, now she's glitchy. In the, wiki, in the wiki technique section, it says, Kristana forces the pen in oh. one to master both parry and dodge. That's not the spell I was hoping for. <laughs> I thought I still had the lasers equipped. I was going to laser her to death. <laughs> Instead of doing something totally ineffectual. Oh, no, I was so freaking close. <laughs> ah. And you're getting it. Oh, my gosh. 
she can enter our second stage with anywhere between 35 and 50 percent of her health. Yeah. Or after losing 35 and 50 percent. How many souls I got? I don't want to go grinding though. That's boring. You were close. You're gonna get it. I have I have a thing for one more blood vial. So if I die this time, I'm probably gonna go get that filled at least. So I can just have the one more. What I'd really like to do is get some of those Quicksilver vials upgraded, but I do not have enough souls for that. Penitent one in sleeplessness, carrying that we have been I and the. Okay, that was not the right decision there. Not off to a great start. Kind of smacking you around. That was good. Oh, too early. Okay, do your thing. <laughs> I should have parried. Go try to jump. I had my parry at the ready, but I just didn't pull it off. Get near the middle, don't jump too early. <laughs> oh. I'm actually surprised that didn't hit me. Our parry pro. No. Okay, good. That attack is the one that does the most to me. You do kind of have to become a parry pro at this boss. Well, once you can get into a little bit of a run, you do real good damage. So she was so glitchy the first time I fought her. She's much better now. She does seem to jank a little bit, but they seem to have improved her quite a bit. So when I was saying whether or not I was going to change my review for this game, this was one of the boss fights that I was like, I need to see how this is improved. Not, not saying that the entire thing would be contingent on this, but she's actually a lot of fun now, so... Before it was almost embarrassing, like the first time I fought her. I mean, it, like she was just janking around the screen, like she was. Like, like when she went into teleport mode, caught. like one time she was teleporting, it was like she got caught in a wall off screen. Oh gosh. No. Okay, I'm really lucky there. It was like she got caught in a wall off screen and it was just uh, making the uh sounds, but wasn't on the screen at all. Uh huh. Again, I really wish I was recording back then. No. Oh no! Got her! Whew. Nicely done. What room eternum? Go on! Purge my soul beaten by the miracle! Take her sword! Yeah, no, just leave her. That's what I do in these tank games. I probably already got the achievement for that, but eh. I never kill NPCs when they're helpless. It just doesn't seem right. All right, let's go ahead and get those uh, things real quick, and then we'll see if, uh, I don't know if there's a boss here or not, but might as well be as prepared as possible, right? Can you kill, or can't you kill her? I never, I've never killed her. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously I've only had two opportunities at it, but I never kill NPCs when given the option. The wiki said she runs away once defeated, so I think if you walk over to her, she jumps away. Oh, does she? Yeah, I just, uh, I don't, I don't even bother. She kind of goes against her go-ahead-and-kill-me thing. I haven't, so I, been, I haven't been punished in a game for not killing them afterwards, so... There might be a game that will punish me eventually. 
Uh, I know there's some situations in Wasteland 3 where you think you're doing the right thing and you... Like, I'm not really giving any spoilers because this is just a side quest, but there was somebody that I <laughs> could have killed and didn't, and then later he shows up and he kills, like, an entire family. Oh, and, gosh. Okay, there's a few I'm... people in Dark Souls I'll kill. Hey, how's it going, Sphere Corvon? You're just in time to see the ending, I think. Uh... There's a couple of people I'll kill in Dark Souls because I know that they do things later on. Uh, I was laughing because Silver and mentioned patches. I've never killed Trace patches, but I know some hot. people really hate patches. Who's patches? With this silver. We're gonna play Dark Souls one of these days. It's probably gonna be a while because I have a lot of games I want to get through, but we're gonna do I it just so you can know the characters. Uh, apparently, he doesn't want to upgrade my. Oh, I'm betting his image changes now that we've done it three times. Yep, there we go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, it's no longer eye nipples. Uh, I don't like him. <laughs> I'm mostly disturbed by his face. Because he looks like he's enjoying it. Maybe. Must I allow the miracle to continue with its punishment? Hurry. Bring me the Quicksilver before it's too late. Well, I'm glad I have at least one more Quicksilver. And I have barely enough souls, so let's do it. With this Quicksilver, I bless the this will mixture be interesting. that will recover your spilled blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we can't help him anymore. <laughs> now I feel like I need to hurry and get Quicksilver. <laughs> But we're going to go beat the boss this week. We're running out of time. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, that's... I don't know. I like everything about that guy. The guy's DLC. He's he's it's interesting. Just, it's better and better. <laughs> that's amazing. I feel like it's not going to go well for him when that thing fully gets out of him. <laughs> It's just like, he comes out and he's like a nag. He's like, hey, why aren't you doing your homework? <laughs> you shouldn't be staying up this late, man. <laughs> it's like, hey, man, I got a D&D &D campaign that I put together, but it's like real railroaded and boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Why did I teleport here? Wasn't there a save point right after the boss? Yeah, whatever, I'll just take the elevator for now. <laughs> Yeah, right, well now we have four bile flasks that apparently heal a lot. Nice. Should be pretty close to full heals at this point, because I think you've sacrificed, what, like half your flasks? Something if like that. Work. Um, we have at least one more upgrade though, so... I got mechanic, letting you decide which form of healing you like. Um, yeah, it seems like it's just better to do the upgrades, personally, but... It's interesting that's how they balanced it. Alright, well we got ten minutes. Hopefully we can do this. In Keeping lots dreams, of uh, flasks is for people that reload their gun closer. when they've only used In one bullet. In my bullet. dreams I tried to talk to you and introduce myself. Guardian of the miracle and of the miracle banner, with great pain I carry the emblem of the father. I am the hands of bloodied skin. I am the eyes from which your mother gazes. But nothing I know of you, apart from your cold, nameless visage, apart from your calloused and wounded hands, apart from the mourning of your deaths. No, I know nothing of you. Only the miracle knows. Now may your sword, full of guilt, with mine of gold, collide. Let them hurt and march in procession. I curse you forever in name. You. I bless you forever yeah. in death. I like how he's like this, like... Like, old crone bishop. <laughs> Whom I almost killed, or... Yeah, he's going down super fast. He's got a gold sword, what do you expect? 
I never understood why that's like something that they do a lot is making gold weapons. Ooh. Okay, I think I could probably knock that into a shield. Just for future reference. Okay, I don't think I can hit fireballs. Hopefully, I think that's it. Well, that worked out. <laughs> you have shattered the mirror. I mean, he kind of sounded like my grandpa, so. Now you see me awoken as the son of the true miracle. Oh. Okay. I bet he's going to look real normal. <laughs> Oh, we have to actually fight the sword. And apparently the sword doesn't take any hits. Oh man, it's uh, the Soul Calibur. <laughs> no. Okay, so the face needs to open. This fight is giving me very strong Radiance vibes. Everything comes back to uh, Hollow Knight now. <clears throat> Hollow Knight is the souls of Metroidvanias. There we go. Knock it off. Oh, you killed him before. Oh, this is the guy that's been talking the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, combo, combo, combo. Come on. Watch out. Stay open. No, I don't want to do the sword again. <laughs> we just opened magic. it. <laughs> we don't have the time to do this fight twice, so... <laughs> First try. Man, if we get a double boss kill, run. Well, we're pretty powerful at this point. He's doing the same attacks that he was doing in the first one. I got him down to half HP on one one round, so not too shabby. Yeah, for sure. Oh, didn't get the last hit. Stay there, stay there, no! If these stupid platforms would actually cooperate. There we go. Ugh. Okay. Well, I could have done it in two, but I didn't. <laughs> Sorry. Just make sure you stay alive. And I still have one blood vial left, so as long as I don't, like, mess that up. Oh, jeez. I do more damage when I'm out of blood vials, so... Still, you sure. There we go. Like, oh, you almost got me! <laughs> Did you just give him a Mickey Mouse voice? <laughs> I mean, not intentionally. <laughs> the Miracle Mouse. Got him. The house is in. Well, he just did four bosses today. Not bad. Boss Rush Night. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Yeah, that looked good, right? Blasphema. Blasphemia. <laughs> that wasn't even the true ending. <laughs> Although the true ending boss, I remember not being that difficult either, so. Wait, is this the ending? Uh huh. Gorgeous pixel art. You have free. His holiness from his afflicted torment. And now he walks by the old processions on the other side of the dream. The cradle of the grievous miracle. The final relic. 
the grail of blood and gold that emanated from the forehead of the father as he silently lamented the moment of his blessed twisting. That first relic is here, at the top of the ashen mountain next to the turn throne where his holiness was kissed by a miraculous pain. And now, your final communion with the miracle awaits. Only you would be able to know how much of it has seeped into your guilty heart. Climb the tower or the mountain of ash. Just like, nah, I'm good, and just turn around and walk away. And the ultimate cheerleader squad, uh, pillars. A mountain of ashes that swallowed up sins and sinners alike has had no mercy on you either. At the mercy of the miracle you were, and at the mercy of the miracle you remain. You are no longer anything but one more anonymous visage, without a voice, without Wait, title. what? Your penitence is over. I couldn't make it up the mountain. The mountain just ate me. And I got but the achievement, fine. the path of the unworthy. Wow, well, well, at least it gives you a hint that it's a bad ending. <laughs> That's true. So yeah, I'm sorry you didn't turn into a tree. Oh. <laughs> so that was blasphemous. What did you? Uh, or that was, was the bad ending. Next week we'll try and get the good ending. I think we. Uh, I think we'll have enough time. Um, now that we've killed, I think that the the angel lady in front of the boss is the hardest thing, and I don't think that there are too many other optional bosses. Of course, we won't be doing any of the DLC until uh, that part in blocks, I guess. Right. So, what did you think, Nick? Uh, I enjoyed it. It was it was entertaining. Yeah, you know, the second time around, it's better. Um, at least it is for me. Uh, I, part of it, I think, is some of those boss fights. I remember being completely messed up, and they're better now. So, I think it's a pretty fun game. Uh, most of the complaints I had about um, your abilities not being able to reach a lot of the bosses I didn't seem to notice that as much this time around like but then again I also didn't buy any Maya Culpa upgrades this time around so right you knew with it yeah so I think if I had spent all of my tears on that and then found that most of them were still useless um, I probably would have the same feeling but going into it knowing what it was made it a more fun experience I think some of the new stuff they added, like I really like the eye nipple dude, um, <laughs> especially with the reveal we had just before the final boss fight. Yeah, I think I'm looking forward to seeing what the end of his story is. Yeah. Almost more than the actual ending of the game. <laughs> so, uh, I have really positive feelings this time, um, even just with this bad ending. Obviously, we have a lot more to go. Um, so I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if I decide to to update my review um, not with the new patch. To be honest, most of the experience is still basically the same. So if you played it before and you didn't like it, it's probably not going to change your mind. But uh, it feels more polished now, um, particularly in the areas that I remember being specifically unpolished. And the sure. ability to teleport around removed a lot of the tedium. Like uh, when we went to buy that Inquisitor key... We would have had to teleport to one of the teleportation spots and walked a long way to get that key. Um, and even if with the being able to teleport to save points, it was still a bit of a walk. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, not there is no game that is for everybody, um, but I, I, I enjoyed it. I think it has some solid boss fights. Um, I don't know that. Uh, like with Environmental Station Alpha and Hollow Knight, and like if you like the boss fights in Hollow Knight, you'll probably like the boss fights in Environmental Station Alpha. I'm not sure that I can make that same claim here. I don't think that if you enjoyed, it's a different kind of fight. Yeah, it definitely feels more 
meticulous? I don't know. It's slower. Uh, some people call this game a Souls-like, and I think that's the reason why, is because it's a lot more deliberate in this game. But like that fight with that uh, the angel lady on the on the rooftop, that was uh, I thought that was a lot of fun. It was fun to actually get good at parrying. I'm not very good at that, so um, it was fun to yeah, actually forcing, do that. Forcing a mechanic that you weren't forced to use previously. Right. Yeah, it was uh, it was fun. Look forward to next week. Yeah. So uh, Caldross says Tetris is for everybody, so I was wrong. But then Sphere Kurabon immediately disagreed with him, so of course. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. No game for everybody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when we do uh, when we do the Metroid streams, there's someone who has a very different opinion than I do about Metroid 2, and I want to bring them onto the stream because I think it's more interesting to have two viewpoints um, of people discussing it uh, without getting angry at each other and just talking about you know the way they view it because it's, it's, it's interesting to see a different viewpoint i think no doubt all right well i think that that's good for this week i don't know how much longer these credits are going to go but um i think this is a good stopping point so thank you again for watching i'm just going to hit the skip button just to make sure there isn't any post credits cutscene. i don't think there is on the bad ending but we'll find out in a second a little kid running up and picking up your helmet and putting it on oh maybe there is He just left the Maya Culpa up there. <laughs> I think that's trying to give you a hint on what you're supposed to do for the true ending, but anyway. Alright, well, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>